cultivate our persona by listening to our selfish motives. So your persona is not interested in, in, in doing what's best for anything other than your selfish ends or aims. I don't know, you know. Remember, not talking to you, I'm talking to, right? Breathe. The persona is interested in selfish motives. Fear is a selfish motive. A sense of lack is a selfish motive. Does that make sense? So then, so then, every encounter, mm, here it goes, every encounter with some word of truth or some metaphysical truth or some term of new thought begins to challenge your sense of self. And when it challenges your sense of self, it begins to shake the foundation of who you think you are. So your persona becomes under attack by you by the light that you flash into it when you come into this sort of new thought teaching. This is not always a comfortable theology. It's not always an easy theology. It's not always something that you want to take and tell your friends when it's whooping on your bippy. <laughs> but, there's a, there's a, but there's an African proverb that said, a bat that thinks it's a bird is in for a rude awakening. And if, if we are functioning through our personality but think we're working through our individual ladder, we're in for a rude awakening. I had, I, I had a, a gentleman, uh, 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 my wife and I, we, at, at one point in life, we uh, were into real estate, rented houses. And one of Mr. Smith, I'll just call him Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith, every time I called Mr. Smith, Mr. Smith would, would almost be a different person every time we talked. <laughs> almost every time we talked, Mr. Smith would, would, I don't know what was going on with Mr. Smith. <laughs> so after having had my share of it, I said to Mr. Smith, Mr. Smith, tell you what, I am going to raise the rent on you and everybody else who lives with you because your lease only calls for one person. Now, interestingly enough, I got a call a little bit later on. I didn't recognize the number. And I picked up the phone and I said, hello? And the voice on the other end of the phone said, Mr. Wells, Mr. Smith here. How are you, sir? I'm fine, thank you. Uh, everyone else is gone. <laughs> and I am the only one here. Are you still planning to raise our rent? <laughs> but I think many of us are like Mr. Smith when we work through these multiple personalities trying to, trying to manipulate situation, condition, and circumstance, but when you work from your individuality, you don't have to manipulate. You can simply be what you are, and being what you are will transform the situation, condition, and circumstance for you. You have to work from your individuality. You have to be led from your individuality. How can you be led from your individuality? How do you cultivate your individuality? You are led from and cultivate your individuality by listening to the still small voice that is within you. This is the surest guide that you have within you, the whispering of the still small voice. But you have to be careful. You have to be careful not to confuse the voice of the stillness with the voice of your ego, because I got news for you. Your ego and your persona know how to sound just like the still small voice. When you, but, but this, is why, this is why Jesus said, my sheep will know my voice and they respond to my voice. 
But if you don't know the voice of spirit, how do you know when your ego is telling you to do something or be something that is not in your divine pathway or that is not on your divine purpose? Part of the challenge that we're having is that we're connected, disconnected from our divinity and working from some other sense of self that is not even for our highest good. It is only wanting to stay around it is only wanting to stay around so that it might continue masquerading and playing. But at some point, spiritual beings, and you've heard me say this before, and I don't know why I keep coming back to it. I guess I keep coming back to it because it's what it is. Spiritual beings have to stop playing spirituality. It's like playing house. You have to stop playing. Either you are or you are not, and if you are, if you are, if you are, then it shows up a certain way. It shows up a certain way. Don't tell me nothing about what you are and what you're listening to if you're still talking the same drag. I don't want to hear it. It's got to show up in your life, world, and affairs. It's got to show up in your actions. It's got to show up in how you talk. It's got to show up. One of the things that God is good for is always showing up. And if it's not showing up, it's because you're not letting it show up. It's got to show up. It's got to show up. This is why John says, I must decrease so that it might increase. But if you're stuck on increasing yourself, if you're stuck on trying to increase something that can only give you a limited return on the increase, then the investment is not worth it. But here's the good thing about investing in God. When you invest in God and let God, let the principle of God work in and through your life, the investment is extrapolated so much so that you don't even have room enough to receive the goodness of God when it comes into your experience. If it's not showing up in your life, it's because you're playing with it. Stop playing church. Stop playing church. <laughs> New Thought Christians are supposed to be a little different. They're supposed to be a little unique. They're supposed to be a different kind of people. Huh? They're supposed to be people who really understands the spirit of cooperation. They're supposed to be people who really understand the spirit of love and life and togetherness. Hmm? But it's not the kind of thing that you can play at. If when you find yourself playing, all you're doing is playing your personality and playing your sense of self. But that's not what it's about. You never get the real fruit of the spirit if you only dip your toe in the water. See, you don't, you don't get wet. You don't get wet when you dip your toe in. You only get a little toe wet. <laughs> right? And you might be able to gauge the temperature of the water when you get a little toe wet. But a little, this, a little toe wet does not give you the full immersion effect, huh? You want to you wanna get down in it. I said one, one Wednesday night, we were talking about James Brown. You know, you got, as, as James said, you want to be able to get in deep. <laughs> right? You need to get in deep. Down deep. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> you want to be able to get in deep. You don't, want to, you don't want to be a surface New Thought Christian. The, the, it, see, the, the theology is challenging enough. It's, it's challenging enough just this notion that, that you coughing all day and night and somebody's telling you you can't be sick. Right? There's something, there's something about this notion that, I mean, you have to be committed to this about somebody telling you that God is your prosperity and you, 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 the ATM, you got 1950. You can't even get your 1950 unless you find an ATM machine that dispenses $10 bills. <laughs> There's something about this new thought theology. See, you have to be all in with this. It's not the kind of thing that will allow you to be halfway in. You got to be all in. Bam!
and it doesn't work when you're not all in. And so what happens? The process of chemicalization just continues to happen. The process of chemicalization continues to happen. You continue to have conflict, but you never resolve the conflict. And that's, that's not the way it's supposed to be. It, it, the conflict or the agitation exists in your soul, but you should not constantly be in a state of agitation. You should not consciously, constantly be in a state of unrest. You should not constantly be in a state of discomfort. But when the chemicalization occurs and you ignore it and go back to the way you always done it because of your muscle memory, because it's easy for you, then you find yourself not having the benefit of being a spiritual being. And what we're talking about is how it is folks who know what we know and hear what we hear and sit under this good, 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 good truth. You don't have to suffer. You don't have to be in pain. You don't have to be broke. Your relationships don't have to be broke. There can be peace and joy and harmony in your home, but you have to be all in. You have to stop playing with this new thought theology because it will work a number on you. You understand what I'm saying? And so when, when John the Baptist says that we must, I must decrease so that he can increase, that's a sign to us. That's a sign to us. That's a sign, that's an indication, that's a signpost that says there are some things that I am doing. There are some things that I am saying that I need to decrease in. You want to decrease from your personality. It ain't that good to start with. Mine or yours. You want to really work on something? Work through your spirituality. You want to really be powerful? Work through your spirituality. You want to really have dominion? Work through your spirituality because it's not in your humanity. Your humanity is going to pass just like the people's who, oh, don't get me started. Don't get me started. But it's going to come and go. But spiritually, you will be here. But you have to decrease in some things and you have to increase in some other things. You want to decrease in your faith so that you can increase in your fear. No, that ain't right. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you. I was about here when I said that, right? <laughs> you want to decrease in your fear so that you can increase in your faith. See how that works? <laughs> you want to, <laughs> you want to, <laughs> you want, that was my personality over there. Now I'm back, now I'm back in the spirit. Now I'm back in the spirit now. Now I'm, rock, I'm rocking steady in the spirit now. You want to decrease in your sense of loneliness so that you can increase in your sense of love. You want to decrease in your sorrow so that you might increase in your strength. You want to decrease in words that don't work for you so that you might increase in your wisdom. See, there's so much more in store for you. There is so much more in store for you, but the key is in your consciousness. And if your consciousness is locked behind your mask, then how in the world are you going to unlock the treasure trove of your good? But it's got your name on it and it's waiting for you. All you have to do is work the stuff that you have, but you have to be willing to work and be all in. Don't be halfway about your soul. This is your soul unfolding. This is your soul experience. This is your joy. This is your day. This is your time. This is your opportunity. This is your moment. This is your season. This is the day that the Lord has made, and you ought to rejoice and be glad in it because the goodness of God is waiting right for you. All you got to do is step into it. God bless you. I love you.